Welcome to this tutorial showing how to handle multiple matches when using a lookup function in Excel. What is the issue? Well, when you use a lookup function in Excel, it will only return the results based on the first match found, meaning if you have any other matches, they will be ignored. So if you need to capture all of the matches and all of the possible results, you'll need to create an advanced formula or use another tool rather than a traditional lookup function. We're going to go over a couple of examples showing two possible alternatives. One is rather easy, but not perfect. The second is a little harder, but returns the results very nicely. This is our data a list of makes and colors for cars and this is the data to match it up with so as you can see for Toyota we have two possible values black or yellow if we try to do a VLOOKUP for example looking up Toyota in our data trying to return the color with an exact matchup, we'll get the color black. And that's right. However, the VLOOKUP did not catch yellow. So we are missing a value, missing a potential match. So the VLOOKUP does not work very well, only for the very first match. And when you do a VLOOKUP or when you use a lookup function in Excel, that is a very common mistake. Not checking for possible duplication of data or multiple matches. So how do you do that? Well, let's check. Using count if, that is our range, in absolute values equals to E11. It will tell us the number of times Toyota was found in our list. And using the formula all the way down, it's telling us that Nissan was found once, Ford twice, and Chevy none. So we know that for Toyota and Ford, we have more than one match. So a VLOOKUP, for instance, would not work very well. The first option is to use the fuzzy lookup add-in that we reviewed in a previous video. Even though the fuzzy lookup is meant to match the data when the text is not the very same, if you adjust the threshold to 1 for a perfect match, and if you adjust the number of matches that you want, it will do the trick. It will capture all of the matches for no like the same values. So let's try. Again, for the fuzzy lookup adding to work, the data has to be converted to tables. So let's do that. My table has headers and that would be you no know, like the, the data table. So I'm gonna rename it list two because my list one is actually uh, this one. Control L. I have headers. Click on OK. And I'm going to rename it list one. And now let's launch the fuzzy lookup on the ribbon. Fuzzy lookup, fuzzy lookup. And I want the left table to be list one, my right table to be list two. I want to match my make. I'm going to click on the button in the middle of the two list. And I want uh, only one make field because they will be uh, the same. So it's pointless to have you know, the, the make twice. I want the color because that's really what I want. I, I don't care much about the similarity because I'm going to put the threshold at the max one to get you know, like an exact match. And for the number of matches, I can increase it. Instead of one, now I'd say 
I want up to three matches. Pressing go. And now I have the results. And for Toyota now, we see the results. Black and yellow. For Nissan, white. For Ford, red and blue. And nothing for Chevy. So it worked. However, you'll notice two things. First, it created additional rows. So the format changed. So it's not always ideal. And second, and most importantly, it is not dynamic. And by that, I mean that if you update your data in your source, it will not update the results. You would have to perform the fuzzy lookup all over again. Let's check. For Toyota, the very first color is black. Entering pink now in my source. The color did not update here. It stayed as black. So you can use the fuzzy lookup for a one-time thing, but it will not update the, the data based on the, the data source, and also it would create additional rows. Let's go back to, to black. Let's close the assistant for the fuzzy lookup. And now let's go over a second solution. It is a little harder, but it is very efficient. This is our table with our makes. And now we want to catch up to three matches. That's why I set up my table with one, two, and three. The first column for the first uh, matches, second for the second matches, and three for the third matches, if we have any. For the sake of time, I'm going to add the formula and paste it, and I'm going to go over it. So why is it complicated? Because as you can see in the formula bar, we have to combine multiple Excel functions, row, small, if, index, if error. So it looks a little complicated. And on top of it, it needs to be entered as an array formula, so not in a traditional way. An array formula has to be entered not by pressing the Enter key, but by pressing Control shift enter And now you see accolades, one at the end of the formula and one at the beginning. That indicates that we are building an array formula. Now, explaining the different functions, row simply returns you know, like the row number of a cell. So if you refer to J16, row of J16 would return 16. That, that's pretty easy. Small returns the uh, nth smallest value within a range of value. So let's try to build a small function to explain. So first the array. I'm going to build an array as an example. So 10, 20, 30, 40, closing accolades. That's my uh, data. And then 3. What that means is that within uh, my data, 10, 20, 30, 40, I want the third smallest value. Pressing enter, 30. Because in my data, 30 is the, sm is the third smallest value. If I were to change to 2, the formula would return 20. Going back to our array formula, pretty much we are comparing our first make, Toyota, to our list. And if there is a match, we want to return the row difference between where the data was found and the header. Because for black, for instance, the row is 11, the row of the header is 10. So 11 minus 10 equals 1. So that would give us the value 1. And we want, in our case, no lack like 0, 011, which is 1, because we want the very first match, so the smallest 
uh, possible value, the first smallest value. We know the index function. It returns a value based on a range and the position. So we have our range, uh, which is now like the list uh, of colors. And then the, the small part of the, of the formula would give us the position to use. So in our case for Toyota, for the first match, it will return now like one. So what is the first value in our list? And that is black. And in case there is no match, we don't want to get an error message. And that's why we have if error. That means if that part of the formula is valid, then give us the value. Otherwise, returns nothing. So nothing between quotes. Now let's try our formula by clicking and dragging the formula to the right and down. And now we have a much better format. We don't have multiple rows for each make, just one row, but now different columns, no, one for each match. So for Toyota, for instance, we have black and yellow. Only one match for Nissan, white. Two matches for Ford, red and blue, and none for Chevy. Now what happens if we update the data source? So let's say that the last record Gold Subaru is actually Toyota. Pressing enter. And look, now we have a third match for Toyota for gold. So by using a formula, we have a dynamic match. As you update the data source, it will update the results. And that is how you handle multiple matches in Excel when looking up a value. Thanks for watching.